Hey guys, welcome to the 4-1 Leap. Today we're going to start with part one of part seven tentatively. Um, parts to clean up your computer and make your Windows PC run a little bit faster. Um, I covered this in an earlier video, but I've had a request to do individual videos for each step and go a little bit more in depth. So today what we're going to talk about is how to clean up space on your hard drive. Now, first of all, your hard drive is separate from something like an external USB drive or a flash drive you may have. So your hard drive is generally on a laptop inside your computer where it's hard to get out. You can't really see it. On a desktop, it's inside that big tower piece, and it can be exchanged on either one. You can upgrade them and get more space on your, your hard drive itself. So to get to our hard drive and see what's going on, actually, we're going to click on Start and computer and if you have my computer on your desktop that's fine generally when you get your my computer open you're gonna have a few different sections right here depending on what you have plugged in if you have a memory uh, stick on the front of your computer you're gonna have a bunch of different drives right here or excuse me a memory bay for flash cards and for cameras cards that come uh, SD cards and things like that you'll have a bay in the front of your computer those drives will show up even though there's nothing plugged into them and that's perfectly fine my DVD drive is showing up even though I do not have a DVD installed on the drive right now or put into the drive so this is my hard drive now depending on how many physical drives may be different and so implementing something we'll talk about in the future called RAID and right now I actually have two physical drives but we see them as one and don't worry too much about that we'll go in a little bit more in depth for that um, later on down the road but right here I have one hard drive and it's labeled OS and that is my C drive most of your hard drives should say C some of yours may be a D drive and that's perfectly okay it's gonna say something like system or local disk it might say Windows XP or Windows Vista or Windows 7 um, Windows 8 even depending on how you it got set up whenever the computer was purchased or configured uh, mine says OSC and if you notice it says right below it I have 244 gigabytes free of 578 now I know I really have a 600 gigabyte hard drive or two 300 gigabytes if you will and you may have like let's say a 750 gigabyte or a 500 gigabyte and it's not showing the whole space on this part of your drive that's perfectly okay that extra space that isn't showing up is actually what's being taken up by something known as BIOS or the formatting of the drive itself depending on what type of file system I'm using um, so I have a 600 gigabyte hard drive and it says I have 244 gigabytes free now that's a little bit less than half which general rule of thumb I, I say you want at least half of your drive free so I would want to come in here and maybe do something to remove some of that space that's being taken up so what we want to do is we want to right click on this drive and select properties that's going to be the last option now if you right click in the open space and select properties you're going to get a different screen so make sure this is highlighted it's good practice to left click on this drive and then right click and select properties and then you should get a screen similar to this and this blue and pink is actually showing the same thing that's shown right here it's just giving us a little bit different picture rather than text so the blue means space that I'm taking up and the pink is the free space just like over here we have a blue bar and then a white bar if your bar has too much space and that blue actually comes to here when it gets past a certain percentage it will turn red if your bar is red that means you have way too much stuff on your hard drive and you need to remove some things so obviously the place you're going to have the most information or most documents is probably going to be listed under your pictures if you have a ton of pictures located in that folder that's taking up a lot of space on your hard drive I would suggest get an external hard drive or some flash drives if not even burn those pictures to a CD or a DVD put them somewhere safe to where they're not going to get scratched or messed up and delete the pictures off your computer if you don't have to have the pictures every day it's good practice to keep it off of your computer and that way you have extra space on your hard drive you might also have a lot of music a lot of people store music on their computer instead of burning them to a CD you might put them on your phone things like that it's still good practice to keep it off of your computer if you don't need it on a daily basis now if you listen to music from your computer all the time then that's fine another thing I still would suggest put it on an external hard drive and just play it from the drive itself 
that does do a lot of wear and tear to an external hard drive, but it still saves more wear and tear for your computer itself, which is gonna, something that's going to last longer than that external drive or something you're going to keep around, hopefully longer than an external drive. Um, the next place you might have a lot of stuff stored on your computer is within your programs. So we're not going to do this on my computer, but under program files, this if it doesn't have a number next to it, this tells me it's my 64-bit program. So under here, this is all my programs that are 64-bit. And under this, pro, this folder is all my programs that are 32-bit. Even though it says x86, the architecture for the CPU calls it 86, but it's actually a 32-bit. So I know it could be a little misleading, but I promise you that's the correct terms. x86 architecture is for a 32-bit CPU, and x64 is for a 64-bit CPU. So how can we get rid of some of these program files? Well, we're going to click on Start, and there's a few ways to get to it. The easiest way that works on all different versions of Windows is to click on Control Panel. And if you're in Category View, you will see Uninstall a Program. So I'm going to click that, and it brings me to my program list. If you're not in the Category View, you may be in the Large Icon View. You come down, and they're in alphabetical order, Programs and Features. And the small icons is exactly the same list. It's just a smaller look. I'm still going to click Programs and Features. So when I get to this screen, what I want to do is I want to search first by the size. So up here in this list, there's different um, titles. I can find where it says Size. And if I just click that, it puts the largest file up to the top. So notice Star Wars Old Republic is the largest file or largest program on my computer. Now moving on, um, the next few things, notice this is some games. Um, I don't want to really get rid of these, so I would want to look elsewhere. And there's going to be some programs you really don't want to get rid of, and you're going to have to give and take on some things. Um, if I didn't really want to look by size, I could go back and put it by name. Or if I was looking for a certain publisher, or if I installed a program like last week, and I wanted to get rid of it, I would come in here and say, oh, I installed this last week. I didn't want that program anymore. So that way it's an e a little bit easier way to look. I suggest do it by name. That way you know what you're looking for, or a publisher at least, so you know what programs. If you run to a program like, again, I have a few games on here. Let's pick one that's not. Uh, Better Explore. I know what that is, but let's say you had this on your computer and might not know what it was. It doesn't show publisher, and that date you can't remember installing that program. You could go to Google and just type in, quote, in quotes, Better Space Explorer, and it would pull up what that program may be or give you some more information on it so you know if you want to remove it or not. One thing I do suggest is never to remove a program if you do not know what it is, especially if you get down here and it has the word Microsoft in front of it. This, like for instance, SkyDrive and Silverlight or Security Essentials, I may could do without those, but they are a program that was created by Microsoft. It's even listed under Microsoft Corporation. So I don't necessarily want to get rid of that unless I know that it's something I installed that I no longer need. Um, the next thing you want to make sure to keep is the Adobe programs, especially Flash, Air, and Reader. This program, Adobe Air, Adobe Flash, and Adobe Reader, are programs that we use when we're browsing the web to look at certain files, to look at websites that might have videos in them or PDF files. Another thing that's big is Java. Again, websites use Java very, very demanding, and it takes up a lot of program space, as you see with the different updates. Uh, you could uninstall some of the older ones if you wanted to, but they don't really take up that much space, a few hundred megabytes. That's not too much to worry about. Uh, moving down a little bit on this list, you'll just see I have random programs on here. There's some I could get rid of if I wanted to. Um, there's some other elsewhere I would like to get rid of programs on my personal computer. Your list of programs is going to be completely different than mine. You're going to know what you installed and what you didn't. And again, if it's something you don't really know if you want to get rid of it or not, I would always leave it and then maybe go look it up or make sure it's something that you installed. The last thing I want to point out about this list, my computer, my brand name is Alienware, and y'all have heard that before. Under Alienware, I have some programs within my computer that came from the factory. If you have a Dell or if you have a Sony or an HP, they're all going to come with their own built-in programs, like the dock at the top of the screen that they use on a lot of the HPs and Sonys. 
Um, Dell has a lot of things that they incorporate in their computers. If you have something, for instance, I have Alien Respawn. That is the Alienware version to do a system restore on my computer. This command center is the Alienware program to run my keyboard that lights up, for instance. Uh, my manual. If I didn't want that, I could always delete that or get rid of that. But rule of thumb, if there's programs within your computer manufacturer that you don't necessarily want to have, you could always get rid of those. And the last thing to get rid of is anything that has the name trial next to it. A lot of companies come bundled with trial versions of antiviruses and office and I, I, it's been so long since I've messed with one or bought one that I didn't configure. But if you have anything that's a trial version, if you do not plan on buying it, you definitely want to get rid of that trial version. A lot of times they're only good for around 90 days. And once that 90 days is up, it's going to come up with pop-ups trying to get you to purchase the program and let you know that it's no longer active until you purchase it. So it's just a good idea to get rid of those trial versions because they take up space, especially if you're not using it. And a lot of times, even when you do want to purchase it, it downloads a whole completely different program. And it's a good idea to get rid of the trial version so you don't have a double program of a certain instance. Um, I believe that's it for this section. We'll start back with another section on um, part two. If you have any questions in regarding anything within this video, please post in these comments. If it's with something else, please put it with that video. Again, thanks for watching. Have a nice day.